house of Kuru, part one, chapter twenty-four, Dhritarashtra's woe. Under Pandu, the kingdom prospered. His victory against the Trigartas, Kalingas, and the Sindh regions earned him fame and reputation. He always considered the advice of both Vidura and Bhishma before making any serious decisions. He also consulted with Kunti in regards to the state and, as a result, prosperity, wealth and fame of Hastinapura spread far and wide, much to the joy of everyone in the city. This fame invited the respect and admiration from the nearby kingdoms as well, as it spilled over to them to some extent. Unfortunately, the same joy was not experienced by his half-brother Dhritarashtra. Both Shakuni and Dhritarashtra kept scheming and worrying about the state of influence, respect and admiration Pandu commanded. I cannot stand this much longer, yelled Dhritarashtra to Shakuni one afternoon as the two were playing a game of dice. What seems to irritate you, your majesty, asked Shakuni with a strange modicum of innocence. Do not act as though you are not aware of my burden, Shakuni. I am burning with pain on being cast away as the royal nobody wants, pined Dhritarashtra. No, your majesty, you, you were in charge of... Shakuni was struggling to think. Pandu's recent victory in expanding the territories was thanks to Shakuni's insistence. Dhritarashtra's patience, which was already tested, was not something Shakuni wanted to continue pressing. He thought long and hard, Your Majesty, you are the firstborn, you are the most pleaded Shakuni. Enough! hissed Dhritarashtra. There is no need for your groveling Shakuni, no need. I know my place, sighed Dhritarashtra. I am the blind king. A nation cannot be led by a blind king, he said which, to Shakuni's mild surprise, had a hint of maturity in it. Maturity, which Shakuni feared. As long as Dhritarashtra gave way to his insecurities, he remained Shakuni's puppet. Now Dhritarashtra is growing, and that meant Shakuni could lose his influence over the mighty empire. Not to mention that Pandu never once cared about his advice when it came to his over Viduras or Bhishmas. You are right, my lord. A kingdom needs strong and able kings, just like Pandu, who subdued the mighty Trigarta, the kingdom, and the Kalingas. We all ought to bow under him and serve him duly, spoke the cunning prince of Gandhara. Serve him? I am the firstborn, and you wish for me? To serve him, bellowed Dhritarashtra, back with the infamous insecurity. But, but your majesty, you, you just stammered Shakuni, pretending to be ridden with fear. I am the firstborn of the house of Kuru, and you dare to ask me to serve Pandu? Had I the eyes to see, I would string a bow ten times more formidable than Pandu's. I would have completed several Digvijayas, screamed Dhritarashtra. Yes, your, your majesty, I was merely, said Shakuni. You dared to ask me to serve him, inquired Dhritarashtra. And now, Shakuni was really scared. After all, Dhritarashtra did possess the strength of ten thousand elephants. Your Majesty, you are the true king and protector of the realm. Bhishma, Vidura and Satyavati are simply blind to see this, pacified Shakuni. To his great relief, Dhritarashtra calmed down. Good! Don't you dare forget that, he instructed. Feeling that he may have incited Dhritarashtra a little more than necessary, Shakuni took leave of his chambers and made his way to Pandu's chamber. He knocked on the gigantic doors of his palace bedchamber and waited patiently. Kunti opened the door and Shakni bowed low and bowed deep. On behalf of the entire land of Hastinapura, dearest daughter of Bhroja, I welcome you, said Shakni. Kunti smiled. Why, thank you. And you are? she inquired. I am the son of Suvala, 
ruler of Gandhara, brother to Gandhari, wife of King Dhritarashtra, brother-in-law to the heir of Hastinapura throne, the humble Shakuni. Pleased to meet you, madam, spoke Shakuni. Kunti nodded slowly and said, Well, the throne is currently held by my husband, the conqueror of the Trigartha tribes, the noble King Pandu. I trust you remember his coronation, specifically coronated by Bhishma, asked Kunti. Of course, madam. But let us not forget, the firstborn is the firstborn, is he not? asked Shakuni. And Kunti immediately spoke, Oh no, no one can deny that he is the firstborn. Please, remind me, when was his coronation? inquired Kunti. What is going on here? asked Pandu, as he had just arrived behind Kunti. Oh, nothing, your majesty, nothing at all. The queen Kunti and I were just discussing naming formalities. I was here to personally congratulate you on your successful conquest and your resplendent wedding. Truly, I have not had such a wondrous feast in such a long time, said Shakuni. Why, thank you, Shakuni, spoke the naive Pandu. Kunti could see behind Shakuni's obsequious behavior. He was certainly up to something, because as soon as she learned that the Digvijaya was his idea, she had her armor on. She had heard and read of many stories regarding usurpers, and Shakuni's behavior was one which fit the description of a usurper perfectly. While Kunti eyed Shakuni suspiciously, Pandu invited him over to his bedchamber and bequeathed him all the respects for an able minister of the realm. Shakuni and Pandu then began conversing on matters of the state, the importance of warfare and the necessity for freestanding armies. Everything was spoken of and in due course the topic of Dhritarashtra came up. Sai Pandu, there is nothing I can do about your elder brother. He keeps pining away on his so-called birthright. He has stopped eating, he no longer has passion for his beautiful wife, my sister. He wouldn't even come out of his bedchambers. Things took a little turn for the worse after my sister blinded herself. Now he blames himself for this. I just do not see him maturing enough for this. I fear the worst, your majesty. He may... He may... said Shakuni. He may what? What? asked Pandu. Oh, I fear the worst, your majesty. I, I really do, said Shakuni. Pandu began to get worried. Along with naivety and innocence, magnanimity was his next weakness. What shall we do about this, Shakuni? I cannot see my elder brother give away to such misery. He is the son of Hastinapura, said Pandu. Alas, my lord, I do not think there is much anyone can do. Short of declaring him king, there really is nothing one can do, complained Shakuni. In your return from the Digvijaya, the expansion on the realm, the amount of fame and glory, your marriage to Kunti and Madri, kings from foreign lands arrive at our palace doorstep for alliance. To you. So you see, Majesty, Dhritarashtra feels useless. He has an accursed life, he believes, said Shakuni. Hmm, I see, said Pandu. Perhaps there is nothing I can do, said Pandu. Unless your majesty interjected Shakuni. Perhaps give Dhritarashtra some recognition. Share some of your glory, asked Shakuni. How, Shakuni, how can I do this, asked Pandu while Kunti was listening intently. Well, my lord, you have worked tirelessly since your coronation, have you not? Conquests, expansion marriages. Your majesty, perhaps a break from palace duties would serve you well. Why not go hunting? Enjoy yourself with your wives. In the meantime, declare Dhritarashtra as regent. He will rule in your steed until you take some time for yourself, said Shakuni. Marvelous idea, Shakuni, roared Pandu. 
My lord, perhaps we need to think, interjected Kunti. No thinking. My bow aches for a hunt. Let us spend some time in the woods, sport with the animals, and enjoy the lushness of forest life, said Pandu. Shakuni, you truly provide us with brilliant ideas. First the conquest, and now this, appreciated Pandu. Shakuni bowed low and long, all in the service of his majesty, my lord, said Shakuni. Pandu was particularly excited with the news. He loved hunting. Indeed, it was his favorite sport. And now he has a very justified reason to indulge in it. After all, expanding the empire, getting married to not one, but two beautiful queens, especially when one of their brothers has pledged an allegiance to the empire, one can justify a little sport of hunting in a luscious forest. He made the announcement the very next day in the throne room where all the members of the ministry were gathered. I am sure you are all aware of the happenings over the past two years since my coronation. Not only has the empire expanded its territories, but also grown in prosperity, collected tribute from all its vassals, and the crown prince is now no longer a bachelor, said Pandu, eyeing both his beautiful queens with affection. All this has taken a toll on me, and now I wish to spend some time for myself in the forests of Chitrakuta, where the legendary King Rama, Lord of the House Raghu, the vanquisher of Ravana himself, sported with his wife Sita, said the King Pandu. In doing so, all the ministers Bhishma, Satyavati and Dhritarashtra looked at Pandu with a puzzled face. There was not much reason, at least in the eyes of the king, to leave the throne empty. Your Majesty, what about the throne? The throne of Hastinapura will be, said Vidura, ah, Vidura, I have decided that during this period of my tenure, I wish to install Dhritarashtra as the king in regent, Pandu said, and Dhritarashtra was numb and shocked. Shakuni smiled. His plan worked. Pandu looked at the blind king and asked, Dhritarashtra, son of Hastinapura, I have a mighty favor to ask of you. Please, do not turn me down. Will you take the burden of the throne on your shoulders? asked King Pandu. Dhritarashtra managed a silent nod despite his shock. His entire body was numb. I will be retiring for one year and a half. And during this period, all matters of the state are to be controlled by my elder brother, the wise and capable Dhritarashtra, said King Pandu. King for a whole year and a half. This is a tremendous task by a man who was humiliated by a wife in front of an assembly of ministers for not being able to show a star to her. Dhritarashtra was speechless. For the first time in his entire life, he did something, something unique to him. He bowed to King Pandu. Not deep or long, but an unmistakable bow. Pandu smiled, glad that he saved his brother from suicidal depression. I hope you liked today's episode of The House of Kuru. If you have not already, please subscribe to this channel and like this video so that you will be notified every time a new video is uploaded. Thank you.